Hey everyone, what's the crack? Lawrence here with another very exciting unboxing from VNM. Those of you familiar with the channel will know that I actually reviewed the VNM shifter a couple of weeks ago. The review came out. I was reviewing that since Christmas time. Today, we've just received this, the VNM handbrake. Let's do it. So those of you familiar with the channel will know that I released a review on the VNM shifter a couple of weeks ago. I've been using this since around Christmas time and communicating regularly with them about what I like, what I don't like, and to be honest, there's not a lot not to like about it. It is an absolutely fantastic device and they really appreciated that feedback and they have sent me the VNM handbrake. So just for clarity, I was one of the first people to buy one of these. I did pay for this with my own money. This VNM handbrake has been sent to me by them and I am as excited, if not more excited, because I was a little bit skeptical, right? You get this VNM shifter, company in Vietnam, nobody's ever heard of them. They want to take on Fanatec. Uh, they produce something that outperforms Fanatec. Uh, so I have to honestly say that I was excited for this, but I am super excited for this. Let's unbox it. So here we go, let's get unpacking this. Um, very nice box, uh, nice and subtle, similar to what Fanatec do. Um, so they've got the VNM handbrake with their logo, very professional. Uh, they've got all their made in Vietnam, uh, as you see there on the box. Uh, really cool, I think it's actually extremely cool that this product comes from Vietnam. It's, look, it's really cool to see uh, stuff like this coming from countries where you wouldn't necessarily expect them to come from. Here we go, let's open this up. Oh wow, look at that. Okay. So if you guys can uh, think back to the, um, the packaging of the shifter, uh, when I unboxed that, I was extremely impressed. And look at this, jeez, that looks, that is so professional. Look at that. That's just a really nicely designed box, isn't it? I like that, I hear some stuff, uh, some metal clanging inside. Let's hope that that didn't uh, scratch or anything. It's probably just some stuff that's loose. Uh, let's get this open. I'm gonna probably need the blade again uh, to get under here. How does this open? This is, this looks like a flap that you can lift. Maybe the side opens here. Let's go this way. There we go. So similar, familiar packaging. Uh, if you cast your mind back to the shifter, they use this uh, foam-like packaging which worked well for the shifter. It protected it very well. Um, what have we got here? So we've got, uh, this is uh, the, this is actually the plate that um, allows you to mount to the back of the shifter. So I'll definitely be doing that. Uh, mount that to the back of the shifter and then you can uh, mount the handbrake to the shifter. So this was actually one of my uh, suggestions to them. I don't know if they had already thought of it as well, but it's great that they uh, keep that in mind because I actually like to have, I have my shifter on the left and um, I like to have my handbrake in between my shifter and my steering wheel which is handy for drift, rally, all that. Uh, it means that you spend as little time on the handbrake as possible. Um, we've got a USB uh, cable in here and this is a very pleasant surprise. They've got a very high quality connector on here uh, with four pins. I don't know if you guys can see that there. Yeah, four pins. Um, USB cable, uh, very uh, welcome to see. Um, now it's not a moving part, you know, I, I, can't, I can't see this cable failing, but if for any reason you damage it or whatever, uh, you may struggle to get a replacement for this. Uh, but that said, uh, it, it should be relatively easy to wire up as well. Uh, but uh, that is cool. I think that's a nice premium touch. Uh, so that's very, very welcome. Uh, the metal sound that we were hearing were a couple of bolts that were um, rolling around inside. Uh, in here we've got uh, some, uh, oh these are actually not part of the, um, the handbrake. Uh, I know exactly what these are and I will cover these in slightly more detail in just a minute. But these are actually replacement shift knobs uh, for my shifter. So uh, we're going to have to, it would be rude not to try and install them for the first time on this video as well. Um, here we go, we've got a bag of uh, nuts and bolts, uh, some bolts, uh, some more bolts here. Uh, I'm not sure at this point what all the bolts do, uh, but uh, plenty of bolts there. Um, 
and we have, pull this out, we've got some uh, springs, we've got some uh, polyurethane uh, bushes or poly, poly dampers, polymers, uh, whatever they're called. Um, why can't I think of the name? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, we've got, you guys will correct me in the comments below. Uh, we've got a couple of springs in there. Uh, another spring here. Uh, not sure which are the more tense uh, springs. I'm not sure what the variations are in the strengths, but we'll figure all that out. We'll put them off to the side over here as well. Put them in, in sight. Um, and well, that's we've got. Oh, we've got one more spring here as well. Put that there and get this out. Now this is, uh, I probably should pull this out first, but this is a little, uh, oh, there's a little just a little uh, nut that fell off it there, uh, but that was just from storage. This is an extender to allow you to use this uh, almost like a traditional handbrake in a car where you mount it uh, vertically, uh, sorry, horizontally rather than vertically. So uh, we're gonna have to try that as well. And here we go, this is the uh, the money. This is the handbrake. I'm not gonna start taking this apart straight away. I will be installing it on my rig as it stands. So one of the biggest things of note is that we get a load cell in here. Those of you familiar with load cells will know that this is a common technology used in pedals. Uh, what it does effectively is there's just a plate in there. When you apply pressure to that plate, uh, it varies voltage. That voltage gets measured uh, and then relays a signal. So. A load cell actually barely moves. There are fractions of a millimeter that it moves when you push it and there, those variations get recorded. Uh, this dampening that happens uh, allows you to uh, elongate those movements and uh, be more precise uh, in your inputs. Uh, if we look in here, we've got a VNM logo as well, uh, which is nice and I do believe, I think that lights up as far as they told me. Uh, it plugs in at the bottom, so our USB connector goes in at the bottom. Uh, and again, uh, what we are, I guess, coming to expect from VNM now, this is beautifully machined. Like, this, it's just really, just super nice. Um, not sure what this uh, at the bottom is. Um, seems to be machined for a reason. I'm not 100% sure about that. We've got various mounting holes. Uh, we've got uh, a nice little, this is clever. Okay, so when, when you pull the handbrake, I'm not sure if I can actually pull it here like this, uh, just a little bit, but when you let it go, um, it tends to hit off something. It needs something to stop it. So they've used, um, it looks like the same material as this, uh, so that when, the, when you let the handbrake go, it actually hits here, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and I, I overall, I, I really like the look of it. Um, I'm not sure if they would have been better off uh, just going a little bit more similar to the Fanatec and not exposing the inner workings, uh, but for many people, uh, especially people who might be used to what the uh, Hosenfeld uh, handbrake looks like, uh, it's a lot more industrial, a lot more mechanical looking than the Fanatec. Fanatec looks a lot more refined, but similar to the Hosenfeld, this looks like it means business. Look at the quality of the machining in there. That is absolutely just, I'm, I'm very, very excited about this. I hope, uh, I hope that it's uh, kind of coming across. So there are a number of ways you can mount it. Uh, the quickest and easiest is most likely to uh, put this on a piece of profile. You'll have to expose this part. You can use it like a handbrake uh, in a car where you could pull it up. The way that I'm gonna mount it first is have it beside my shifter so that I can just pull it like that. Um, so uh, it's gonna be upright. Uh, you can, if you want to, mount it like this, but have the handle facing upwards. You've got this guy here, uh, which allows you to do that. We will be installing that in the more detailed video, uh, but that most likely is, goes something like this um, and allows you to mount this handle to this. So that's pretty much it for the unboxing. I am just, I'm very excited about installing this on my rig. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't know, don't know what, I, I don't know much about the product other than that. I know that it has a 100 kilo load cell. Um, I know that we've got some variations in the springs here that I'm gonna have to try. Uh, I don't know what, it, what all of this means. I'm guessing this is a replacement for there. Uh, and we got a lot of hardware to mount it. Uh, we'll figure all that out at a later date. 
for now, this is the unboxing of the handbrake. Let's have a look at those new shifter knobs. So one of my criticisms of the VNM shifter was the way the knob worked and the way uh, it came off. Firstly, you have to spin this. This is not the, the, the difficult part. Um, but then you were faced with this, the threading on the bar. Uh, the threading is not on the bar, it's on a separate piece. Now again, this may not be the end of the world for everybody, but if I want to change this plate, I need to take this off first. So to do that, I need a tiny little Allen key, uh, put that in there. Uh, loosening one side usually does the trick. It doesn't in this case, because it's probably just in a little, um, a little ledge that's been etched in. But I've just thought about the fact that this is probably the last time that I'm going to be removing this off because the new shifters, and we'll go like for like with the actual um, shifter. So we'll get this tall one here, which I like to use for sequential. Um, I, I really appreciate them sending me this. I, I wasn't expecting them uh, to send me this, uh, but uh, I knew instantly what it was. So what they've done is they've taken the old design uh, with that little piece here that screws into it, and they have incorporated it all into one very clever unit. So all you need to do, to the best of my knowledge, I've never used one of these before, but I get the principle. All you need to do is unwind that slightly. I think it should slot on there. You should be able to control the height completely yourself. So if you want it low down, up high, whatever. And in theory, I should just be able to tighten this. And then, look at that. That is class, that's nice. Other subtle differences, uh, the coating looks slightly different. It's a little bit more matte. The uh, older one was a little bit glossier. I don't know if you can see that in the in the same light there. Uh, but, uh, and the, the beveling at the top, the rounding, slightly rounder here, maybe just slightly more comfortable. Um, I, I do know that uh, VNM love listening to their customer feedback, so the, Odds are, these are not just things that they decided to do for the sake of it. Uh, it is a comfort thing. And I think that uh, if I had to choose between one of these, uh, even without trying them, I'd probably go for a rounder design on there as well. So uh, fair play for that. Um, and then it should be as simple as uh, if I want to do the other one. Again, this knob is a little bit uh, less shiny than the material on the last one. So I'm not sure if they changed their process or if that's purposely done like that. Uh, it's nice and matte. Same, really just super cool design. So in theory, what used to take a lot longer, you should be able to just unscrew that, pull it off, put the new one on and tighten it. Here we go. Look at that. How cool is that? That is, I really, I, I really like that. So there you have it, the VNM simulation handbrake unboxed uh, and a cool little insight into uh, the constant uh, improvements that they're making with their products. So since I've actually changed from the VNM back to the Fanatec, um, I did really like the, and I do really like the quick changing, but the Fanatec is definitely, I stand by every word that I said uh, the Fanatec is inferior to the VNM. The VNM is better at sequential, it's better at hitch pattern, uh, it's just not better at that quick switch, which I really, I would use that uh, almost every time I sit down in my sim. Um, the thing is though, uh, since that video, my Fanatec shifter has started being a little bit flaky, uh, it has started giving a couple of missed shifts and stuff, so I need to take it apart, check it out. Uh, the fact that these new gear knobs arrived, the fact that the handbrake arrived, uh, the fact that this product um, has a lot of my feedback in it, um, I need to install this back on my rig. The Fanatec is going back into storage for a little while um, and uh, the way things are going, it's not gonna get back on my rig. I'm super excited about the VNM products. Uh, absolutely love it. As I said, for complete transparency, I paid for the shifter first day. Uh, these knobs were sent to me for free and the handbrake was sent to me as well. Uh, but these are products that are very much on my roadmap and uh, the prices are extremely reasonable and it's just It's just exciting. I just I love these products If you have any questions about any of the hardware that I use I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 o'clock UK time Irish time uh, I will be using this hardware during those live streams 
Feel free to ask me any questions about that or any of my other hardware or general opinions or just come in and say hi. Thanks a minute for watching. I'm Lawrence. Catch you there.